later today, Donald Trump will cement his takeover, really a family takeover of the Republican National Committee. Shortly, Ronna McDaniel and her co-chair will officially step down, a move essentially forced by Trump, and then two candidates that he has endorsed, one of whom is his daughter-in-law. They are expected to easily win elections for the top positions. CNN's Elena Treen is at that spring meeting in Houston, and we'll watch it unfold today. Elena. Yeah, well, good morning, John. I do want to just start with some of the reaction to Joe Biden's speech last night. We saw uh, Donald Trump. He watched the address from his home at Mar-a-Lago uh, and, as promised, delivered a live play-by-play -play on Truth Social in response to Joe Biden's speech. And it really was a stream-of-consciousness reaction from Donald Trump. He uh, attacked Biden heavily. He went after him on his positions on Ukraine and Social Security. But his attacks also grew increasingly personal. We we know that House Speaker Mike Johnson warned Republicans to maintain decorum yesterday in the chamber, but that was advice that did not reach Donald Trump. Uh, he very much attacked Biden. He mocked his appearance. He mocked his hair and his walk and also claimed that he was, quote, so angry and crazy. Now, Donald Trump also responded on True Social with some video, uh, taped video messages in response to Biden's speech, one of which really trying to turn the tables on Joe Biden's argument that Donald Trump is a threat to democracy, as we have seen Donald Trump do in the past. He claimed that Biden is the true threat. Take a listen. Joe Biden is on the run from his record and lying like crazy to try and escape accountability for the horrific devastation he and his party have created, all the while they continue the very policies that are causing this horror show to go. We cannot take it any longer as a country. Now, John, uh, obviously, we have heard this type of rhetoric from Donald Trump in the past, as well as seen him uh, live post during these large events. But they do take on new significance now that he is the presumptive Republican nominee. And it also comes as his grip on the Republican Party is tightening, something we're going to see play out today here in Houston with that RNC spring meeting. We're going to see Ronna McDaniel step down from her position as chairwoman. It comes after Donald Trump and her relationship um, had really grown tense and had been a struggle for over a year now. Uh, and we're going to see Donald Trump's hand pick uh, replacements for her glide to their path to the top of leadership at the committee. And again, this comes as Donald Trump is very eager to use the weight of the RNC, have their full interest infrastructure behind him, including their data operation, um, their ground game strategy, their pull with voters, and of course, their fundraising. But the way it's been described to me, John, by senior advisors is, yes, it is normal for uh, a presumptive nominee or a candidate to have their own uh, control in a way over the RNC or of a committee when they take power. But I'm, it's been described to me as more of a takeover for Donald Trump as he tries to sync his vision with the RNC. John. And his family with the RNC. Elena Train in Houston, thank you very much. President Biden laying out what he believes are the stakes right now and with a very keen eye toward November, of course. A speech The Atlantic dubbed the most unusual state of the union in living memory. Let's test that against history right now. CNN presidential historian Tim Naftali joins us. It's good to see you, Tim. You've studied many a president and you've studied many of right. these major addresses. What did you see in this speech? Well, first of all, you know, this is the first time in... Um, in a in his over a century that a president an incumbent is running against a former president this is the first time in history that an 81 year old man has ever given a state of the union address and this is the first time in history that uh, an, an american president faces a re-election challenge against an instigator of, of an insurrection so just there we're talking about an unprecedented historical speech um President Biden, in many ways, had to give a state of the president speech more than a state of the union speech. People were watching to see his energy level, his vibrancy, his fight, his willingness to fight for re-election, and people saw it yesterday. They saw all of that. It's a, it's a really interesting framing. I don't, I hadn't thought of it that way. People were looking to see how he did, not how he presented the message, or not how well crafted the policy was um that is a that's an interesting but in and, and part of that was it was 
a surprising bit how many times that he did bring up Donald Trump, though not by name, talking about his predecessor to draw contrast between then and now. Let me play a little bit just to remind folks. Now my predecessor, a former Republican president, tells Putin, quote, do whatever the hell you want. My predecessor and some of you here seek to bury the truth about January 6th. Many of you in this chamber and my predecessor are promising to pass a national ban on reproductive freedom. In watching, I had a couple questions for you. Do you think that was effective? And do you think he did it because he wanted to, or do you think he did it because he needed to? The Biden coalition is the old Democratic coalition of the 1990s plus um, folks who don't want to vote for Donald Trump. There are independents and, and, and some former Republicans who will support Biden in 2024, as they did in 2020, just because they don't want to see Donald Trump in the White House again. It is very important for the president to remind those elements of his coalition that he well understands the mandate they give him. So I think he had to mention it. That can't be the only message he delivers because there are progressives in the Democratic coalition who want to hear much more. And he gave them more about Gaza last night. And he also wants, everybody wants a vision for the future. They just don't want to elect someone because he wants to be president. They want to know if we reelect you, sir, what do you plan to do in the next four years? So he had a heavy, heavy burden on his shoulders last night. One thing about we know about the State of the Union is uh, it's a lot about some it's a lot about tradition and it's a lot about you see like institutional Washington right before your eyes. That's what you're looking at with the State of the Union huh. and looking at this speech in the historical context. Biden did what used to be kind of thought of as unthinkable, which is criticizing the Supreme Court and directly addressing the justices as they sat right before him in the chamber. I want to play this for folks. This is when he was talking about the decision that overturned Roe versus Wade. The Supreme Court majority wrote the following, and with all due respect, justices, women are not without electoral, electoral power. Uh, excuse me, electoral or political power. You're about to realize just how much you get right about that. Tim, what did you make of, of that moment and the fact that it's coming from Joe Biden, nonetheless? Well, first of all, um, um, Reproductive rights um, are a very important element of the president's message and the vice president's message. It's got to be it's got to be a way to energize and mobilize people to go out to vote uh, for the team for the ticket in 2024. So he, he, of course, had to mention it. He also believes it in terms of attacking uh, the Supreme Court. Well, American culture changes and our political culture doesn't stay the same. We are in a particularly divisive partisan moment where people expect their leader to show fight, show the willingness to, to basically express their disappointment with the status quo. So I believe that just as Republicans expect a certain level of fight, obviously, from Donald Trump, and they get that and more, Democrats and independents are expecting the same level of fight from Joe Biden, and he gave it to them yesterday. It's good to see you, Tim. Thank you.